What's going on guys, it's Sokal, I'm back with a brand new video over on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I will be giving you my full and in-depth review of the 9.7 inch iPad Pro. Now if you just take a second out of your time to hit the like button or subscribe towards the end of the video, it would be greatly appreciated. Without any further ado, let's hit the titles. with the iPad Pro being branded as Pro, you would of course expect it to be quite a monstrous, powerful machine. Now, it does deliver on that, but it's not as powerful when compared to its 12.9 inch outer brother. Now, as you can see, I've compiled a table of the tests that I've done with the larger iPad, as well as the 9.7 inch variant. Now, of course, on my channel, I have uploaded a number of videos where I compare the 9.7 inch iPad Pro to the iPad Air 2 as well as comparing the 12.9 inch iPad Pro to the 2016 12 inch Retina MacBook. Now you can click the cards on the top right of the screen or links to these videos can also be found in the description section. Now where you will find a difference between both of these iPad Pros is that the larger 12.9 inch iPad Pro does have more graphical performance capabilities at least when compared to the 9.7 inch variant. Now of course this is mainly down to the 12.9 inch iPad needing more of that graphical performance to push more power to the additional pixels when compared to the 9.7 inch variant. But in all honesty both of these devices are very capable and very powerful so you wouldn't really feel much of a difference between these devices. Now the display on the 9.7 inch iPad Pro is a lot more accurate in terms of color representation at least when compared to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now with the 9.7 inch iPad Pro you do get something that Apple called True Tone. Now what this essentially means is that there are four ambient sensors which are used to calibrate this screen so if you're in more of a warm environment then that will be displayed on the screen itself with the screen itself turning a bit more yellow. Now I'm not sure if it's down to the calibration process that Apple used with them being individually calibrated or if it could be something else but even with True Tone turned off as you can see on the right hand side my 9.7 inch iPad Pro still has more of a warmer tint to it at least when compared to the 9.7 inch iPad Air 2. Now in terms of the design it is almost identical to that of the iPad Air 2 being it has a 9.7 inch screen size as well as the bezel size and the overall dimensions of the device is the same. The only difference is being that you now have a protruding camera as well as an LED flash. The placement of the speaker grill on the bottom of the device is more spaced out from the lightning port. There's also another set of speakers on the top of the device between the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as the sleep wake button. And over on the left hand side of the device we do have the inclusion of the smart connector. This is a connector that will be used to allow third party cases and keyboards to connect. It's also seen on the larger 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now the 9.7 inch iPad Pro does in fact come with the same camera system found in that of the iPhone 6s. This means it's able to take 12 megapixel stills as well as shoot video at 4K resolution. Now you can click the card in the top right hand of the screen or links again will be found in the description section to a video which compares the camera on the 12.9 inch the iPad Air 2 as well as the 9.7 inch iPad Pro. Now just like it's larger 12.9 inch brother, the 9.7 inch iPad Pro does come with support for the Apple Pencil. Now you can click the card in the top right of the screen to go and check out my full review on the Apple Pencil. To quickly summarize everything about the 9.7 inch iPad Pro, it has an awesome display which is capable of displaying loads of different colors. The speaker system on this iPad is unlike any other. It comes with Apple's signature all day battery life. It has an array of different accessories, of course, if you need them. Both the rear and front facing cameras are capable of taking some awesome shots. 
is capable of outputting enough power to rival that of a MacBook. The only downsides that I do say that this 9.7 inch iPad Pro does have is that it only comes with 2GB of RAM which very soon will not become enough especially when compared to the larger 12.9 inch iPad Pro which has 4GB of RAM. Now the other disadvantage that this iPad Pro will have is that iOS is slightly lacking. I mean you only have the ability to run two apps side by side. So if you're like me and you like to have loads of different programs and applications open simultaneously, then you might want to look elsewhere, maybe towards a Windows laptop or towards a MacBook Air or Pro. In fact, I will be having reviews coming of the MacBook Air very soon. So do please subscribe to see those videos. So guys, that has been it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, then please like the video, subscribe if you're new around here, over on the left hand side you will find my 2016 12 inch retina macbook review and over on the right hand side you will find my 12.9 inch ipad pro review thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one have a good one